In this video, I'm covering some padding and margin examples in Gutenberg. You see I have my page builder up with a bunch of different blocks and I'll be doing a couple of different examples with paddings and margins. So the, at the top of my page, I have a full width image followed by a heading block. You can see that the heading block is right up against the image block. So do I want to use padding or margins? Well, this this type of block has a, uh, this is the spectra heading block. It has padding and margin options. So if I added 50 pixels of padding, you can see that the heading block starts here right up against the image and it takes 50 pixels of open space or buffer before I reach the content. That's probably not what you want to do when you're just talking about spacing between blocks. You probably want to use margin so that your block will start right after the 50 uh, pixels of buffer. So when you're talking about spacing between these blocks, I'm using margin just to keep it simple so that my heading block doesn't span an extra 50 pixels. So in the next group, we have the group block from Gutenberg. You'll see that there's already a default padding built in here. It's taking this from the theme. I'm using the Astra theme. So if you don't have your theme designating like a padding here, it, it'll, it might be right up against the edge. But if I go over to the group block settings and I go to dimensions and I start messing with the padding, watch what happens to the edge of this uh, content. I set the padding to zero and now it's right up against the edge of the block, right up against the group block. So when you're playing with this uh, slider, now you're taking over the padding instead of going with the default padding. So this slider now designates the padding for all four sides. If you want to break it out, you can. You can go to um, go back to the group block look at the padding and then unlink it and then you got the top right bottom left if you want to take over the distance between this block and the start of the group block say you wanted 50 more pixels select the group block go to dimensions and then margin and now i can view the margins as well i go down here's the margin slider i'm going to unlink that do a margin top and you can see it's starting to get bigger. Now it's putting that margin top between my group block and the block right before it. So next I'm gonna be looking inside this group block. So we have a heading and then we have a bunch of paragraphs and I want, I want to put some space between this header and the paragraph. So again, I'm going to go over to dimensions here I can choose padding or margin. I'm talking about space between here. I only really care about the, the margin between the margin bottom of the heading. So I'm going to go to margin, select the bottom, maybe beef it up a little bit. If you want, you can designate an actual number by clicking this, changing it to pixels. It was on REM, pixels could do easily do it to whatever you want so now we have a hundred pixels between the bottom of this uh, block and the paragraph block okay next up we have an image and you can see it's a Gutenberg image block and it follows the group block right after so we don't expect any distance between these two Again, if you wanted some distance between the two, you would go to the image block and then let's see, there are no dimensions on the image block. So I might have to add a margin bottom to the group block. So I go to the group block and I go to dimensions and I go to the margin bottom. Let's watch it. And now it's adding a little distance. And uh, so now we have a little distance between this 
uh, image block and the group block and then I'm going on to the spectra containers which use flexbox so the next group of container the next blocks are from spectra and it uses this container flexbox so below the image I have a container and that container is a large container and within that container I have two more containers one of them is this one here on the left and then the second container is this one here on the right so this container you can see right away that um, this container these this image isn't right up against this uh, this image before it so there's already some built-in uh, margin and padding within these containers so if I look at this container here, um, you can see that there are two containers within it, but why aren't they vertical? That's because I set it to, with the flex box properties, left to right here. So you can actually, you don't have to do columns and rows with these. You can just set the inner containers to go left to right. And I also told them to be right up against the top of the container. And again, this one, is higher than this one so we're gonna have to try and get these even with um, the CSS margin and paddings you can see within the style of this container under spacing this is designating a column gap of 20 and that means the space between these two containers since they're in columns is going to be 20 if I take it down to zero now all that's left is it's is the containers own padding so i'm going to leave it as it was it was 20. and then i'm going to put this image right up against this left full left side by getting rid of all the margin and padding within it so the first thing i need to do is click on the big container and see if there's any margin left or padding left you can see by default it's saying there's padding left of 10. if i remove that watch the image shift 10 to the left okay but it's still not all the way over so this inner container must have some margin and padding so i go to that and i go to style and within that you can see that it's saying well, the padding is 20 on the left, or it's 20 all the way around and 10 all the way around. So if I got rid of the 20 on the left, watch it shift, and it's still got a little bit more to go. That's the 10 on the margin of this container. And now we're right up against the side. So how do I get the image right up against the top? You do the exact same thing. You take away the top, the margin 10, the padding 10, or the 20. And then this container also, the large container also has 10 on the top. So now it's, it's buttoned right up against it if I uh, reloaded the page. So now this info box isn't even what if I just wanted it to be even? Let's look at the info box. We have uh, a padding 10 all the way around. So what I would need to do is I'd go to this inner container and instead of uh, 10 all the way around, we have, what was that? It was just padding 10. So this one, just do padding 10. Link them up, do 10 and then get rid of all the margins so now they're starting at the same height well one of the confusing things is that it also has this row gap and column gap so when i'm talking about this large container and they're in columns because i set them to go left to right i'm going to be adjusting the column gap here the row gap means nothing if if the row gap if you're containers are spaced vertically that's where the row gap comes in when they're spaced side to side that's where the column gap goes in and since this large container specifies going left to right the column gap will move the inner containers uh, but 
if I go to this container right here with the two images, these are stacked. So now you'd expect the row gap to adjust the um, the gap between the, the blocks within there because this container specifies in the flex box that they are vertical. So you would expect when you adjust the row gap that it's going to adjust the um, the space between the rows. I think it was 20 by default. And then if you mess with the column gap, it doesn't matter because they're not in columns. And then on top of that, you just have the padding and the margin within each container, which is also adjustable. So again, these containers are really nice. That's uh, part of this free um, blocks that come with the Spectre plugin. And um, that's really all I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you found it helpful. See you next time.